57. If 5Z2 by 7Z1 is pure imaginary, is pure imaginary modulus of 2Z1 plus 3Z2 by 2Z1 minus 3Z2 is equal to 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, root 2, 4, 2, root 2. Okay? Now you can see that is 5Z2 by 7Z1 is pure imaginary. We can take we can take 5Z2 by 7Z1 is equal to lambda i where lambda is real. Pure imaginary means real part is 0. Right. From this, Z1 by Z2, how much you will get Z1 by Z2? Or Z2 by Z1 is equal to 7 lambda i by 5. Or this you can write as or Z1 by Z2. Z1 by Z2 is equal to 5Z2 by 7 lambda i. 7 lambda i itself. Now the given modulus of 2Z1 plus 3Z2 by 2Z1 minus 3Z2 is equal to multiply, divide numerator denominator with Z2, 3Z2 or that is 2Z1 by 3Z2 plus 1 by, by what you look at this, by 2Z1 by Z2, 3Z2 minus 1. Now write Z1 by Z2 is equal to, that is 2 by 3 into 5 by 7 lambda i minus plus 1 by, by 2 by 3 into 5 by 7 lambda i minus 1. Now Z1 by Z2 is equal to how much you get? 5 by 7 lambda i that is minus 5 i by 7 lambda. 7 lambda. Now use comprehensive dividend or 2z1 by or 2z1 by 3z2 is equal to minus 10i by 10i plus 7 lambda to minus 10i by 7 21 lambda 21 lambda itself 2 by 3 is not okay Componendo and dividendo. And dividendo for two, for a equation number two, you will get 2z1 plus 3z2 by 2z1 minus 3z2 is equal to. 21 lambda minus 10i by minus 10i minus 21 lambda. So this is 21 lambda minus 10i by 21 lambda plus 10i. That is a good one because Modulus of A bar seems mod Z bar is same as mod Z is same as mod minus Z. So, 
what is the value of 2z1 plus 3z2 by 2z1 minus 3z2 modulus? It is simple, nothing but 1. The answer is uh, option number 1. For complex number z and omega, for complex numbers, z and omega, then mod z square omega minus minus z into mod omega square is equal to is equal to z minus omega z minus omega if and only if if and only if 1 z is equal to 2 omega or z bar omega is equal to 2 2 z is equal to omega or z bar omega is equal to 1 3 z is equal to minus omega or z omega bar is equal to i and 4 Z is equal to 2 omega or omega Z and mod Z square omega minus mod Z omega square is equal to Z minus omega. How do you know? 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 Z is equal to omega or Z bar is equal to omega 2. One of these. So we have to find out which is, which is correct option. So now you can take that is now given mod z whole square omega minus mod z omega omega square. Suppose suppose is equal to z minus omega. So that implies, if you take omega to the side, omega into mod z square plus 1 is equal to z into omega, if you take this one, sorry, this is z into mod omega square. So z into mod omega square plus 1. Okay, so this shows that z by omega is equal to mod z whole square plus 1 by mod omega whole square plus 1 and this is pure real, in fact pure positive. So that means z by omega is a pure real, so therefore z by omega is equal to z bar by omega bar or z omega bar is equal to omega z bar. So, this is the first condition you got it is. Now, we substitute. This is got. Now, what is the hypothesis you are given? Mod z square omega. So, it is given mod z square omega minus z into mod omega square is equal to z minus omega and so omega implies right z z bar z z bar omega minus z omega omega bar is equal to z minus omega but you have seen that omega z bar is equal to z omega bar is equal to z bar omega z omega bar is equal to z bar omega. So, you can write that is. So, that is z into z bar omega is, is z omega bar z omega bar minus z omega bar sorry z omega bar into omega is equal to z minus omega is equal to z minus omega. Uh, if you take uh, z 
chat to this kama here chat into jad omega bar my minus jad sorry minus 1 is equal to if you take to the side omega into jad omega bar minus 1 right so that means what you got is that implies z minus omega into z omega bar minus 1 is equal to 0 so this shows that either z is equal to omega or z omega bar is equal to 1 so that is either z is equal to omega or z bar omega is equal to 1 we are taking bars on that so if that condition is satisfied if and only if that is either z is equal to omega or z bar omega is equal to 1 right so the correct option is number 2 z is equal to omega or z bar omega is equal to 1 59 let a b c b distinct <coughs> distinct complex numbers distinct complex numbers mod a is equal to mod b is equal to mod c now if alpha is a root of a z square plus b z plus c is equal to 0 and mod alpha is equal to 1 then then 1 b square is equal to minus ac 2 b square is equal to ac 3 b square is equal to 4ac and 4 b square is equal to 3ac this is a very good problem because it won't take much time your mains either to mains this is not asked but this may be asked in mains itself right by hypothesis by hypothesis alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a and alpha beta is equal to c by a where beta is the other root is the other root other root so now you can take that mod beta is equal to mod alpha beta is equal to modulus of c by a which is mod c by mod a and this is 1 because mod c is equal to mod a so therefore mod alpha into mod beta is equal to 1 or mod beta is equal to 1 since mod alpha is equal to 1 so so therefore both roots both roots are of unit modulus of unit modulus so therefore so therefore now minus b by a minus b by a that means 1 is equal to minus b by a which is modulus of alpha plus beta whole square so that is alpha plus beta into alpha bar plus beta bar because this is mod b by mod b whole square by mod a whole square but mod b is equal to mod a so therefore this is one but minus b by a is equal to alpha plus beta 
So that is alpha plus beta into alpha bar plus beta bar. So this is alpha plus beta into 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta. 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta. Since alpha alpha bar is equal to 1 is equal to beta beta bar. So that is alpha plus beta into alpha plus beta by alpha beta. So that is minus b by a into minus b by a by c by a. So this shows that term b square by ac. That is nothing but b square by ac. So therefore, b square by ac is equal to 1. So that is b square by ac is equal to 1 or b square is equal to ac. Correct answer is number 2. Answer. So either two, we did almost 60 problems on algebra of complex numbers which cover all the fundamentals and I think this is enough for your practice and so the next topic we are going is in the same subjects complex numbers we are now dealing with organs plane and geometry of complex numbers we want to discuss the organs plane and geometry of complex numbers of course in the previous problems we used the concept of organs plane, but now I am giving, uh, illustrating what is meant by organs plane, how the points are there, and in that how to use geometry. So, organs plane means, here you can think, here, you take, let sigma be a plane, two perpendicular lines, x dash, o x bar, and uh, y dash, y o, bar are considered and they call them as they call them as x and y axis y axis with that O as origin. Now let Z is equal to A plus IB be a complex number. We, we get a unique point, unique point P A B with A as X coordinate, A as X coordinate and B as Y coordinate. Y coordinate. And conversely, if Q, C comma D, any point in the plane in sigma, then it is known that it is known that z is equal to c plus i d is a complex number. Is a complex number. That means there is a one one correspondence, one to one correspondence between the set of complex numbers and the set of all points in the plane sigma. So therefore, the plane in which each complex number is represented by means of a point with x coordinate as real part, y coordinate as imagined part, that such a plane is called organs plane. There is a one to one correspondence, one correspondence between the set C 
of complex numbers and the set of all points points in the plane sigma now so such a plane sigma such a plane is called organs plane so that means the plane in which each complex number can be represented by means of a unique point is called organs plane so that means now we can identify the organs plane the points in the organs plane by means of complex numbers because there is a one to one correspondence so here afterwards by complex number a plus i b we can we can point out that as a point p with a as x coordinate and b as a y coordinate so therefore here afterwards we identify by complex numbers and there is another identification is also there and all of you know what is meant by vector and uh, here now identification of complex numbers with vectors in the organs plane that is equal to a plus i b and uh, p a b is the point is the point representing z and it is known that known that o p bar that is o is origin o p bar is the position vector so here afterwards in the organs as far as organs organs plane concerned complex numbers or points in the organs plane or vectors in the organs plane are one and the same even though the sets are different but their properties are same so here afterwards what you give i can represent a complex number by means of vector also p represents z in the organs plane plane then the image of p in the x axis represents represents z bar represents a z bar in the organs plane and also the also the point q such that origin is the midpoint midpoint of of pq represents represents minus z minus a z please see if this is pz and if you drop the perpendicular and uh, extend to the same distance so this is uh, z bar this point is nothing but a z bar and uh, if you uh, join origin to p and extend same distance backwards q this is minus z 
that is a minus z that means if you see that if this is p dash r p dash so the triangle pqp dash the triangle pqp dash is nothing but right angle triangle right angle the triangle right angle at p dash okay right and uh, of course the rest of the constructions are uh, of course usual you uh, why i miss uh, one should have a clear cut picture about the organs plane and many people they explain uh, the identification of complex numbers with points but here what i suggested is we can identify complex numbers by means of vectors also in the organs plane that is a, a fresh point because that will uh, that by means of by representing a complex number by vector it will is so many things uh, in the problems z1 and z2 represent represent p and q respectively p and q respectively then then z2 minus z1 the complex number z2 minus z1 represents the vector vector pq bar that means if p and q are the position are the uh, uh, position vectors of the points representing z1 and z2 then pq bar is nothing but z2 minus z1 that means the position vector of the terminal point minus the position vector of the initial point so that is this one op bar and this is oq bar this is z1 and this is z2 so r is so z2 pq bar this is pq bar this is z2 minus z1 this is z1 and this is z2 so z2 minus z1 always if you take in the organs plane if you take any vector ab bar that is nothing but the complex number representing q b minus the complex number representing a what z1 minus z2 or z2 minus z1 is modulus of pq bar It is nothing but the distance pq, distance pq itself. And uh, all of you know that uh, about uh, z1 plus or minus z2, z1 z2, and uh, z1 by z2. If Z2 is not equal to zero. Z2 not equal to zero. This is. And uh, of course, you might have learned that these are uh, fundamental points, and everybody must know. Here, please see x, y, and suppose this is point P Z1. Point Q Z two. Now, if you complete the parallelogram, this is R Z one plus Z two, or Z one plus a Z two. This point and uh, number one here is number one. If P and Q represent z1 and z2 in the organs plane of course here out words i don't write organs plane p and q represent z1 z2 means in the organs plane in the organs plane then the fourth vertex the fourth vertex obtained by completing uh, 
by completing the by completing the parallelogram with op and oq as adjacent sides z1 plus z2 z1 plus z2 and uh, you can write that and or b the uh, have the fourth vertex of the parallelogram of the parallelogram completed with op and oq dash q dash represents q dash is equal to minus z2 Completed with the open work as a adjacent sides. The fourth vertex of the parallelogram completed with OP and OQ dash as a adjacent sides represents Z1 minus Z2. That means uh, this is. Please see, this is Z1 minus Z2. If you take this angle, then you can write that is. See, argument of Z1 minus Z2 is equal to the angle of rotation. Angle of rotation. Angle of rotation of real axis. That is uh, OX bar about origin, about O. To fall on, to fall on, that is uh, the vector, and the vector R line Z1 minus Z2, or that is, is equal to R dash bar. That is argument of Z1 minus uh, Z2. See, if the rotation is, if the rotation is anti-counterclockwise, then we will we'll consider it as positive. If the rotation is uh, clockwise, then we will consider it as a negative. See the main difference between the vectors and complex numbers. You, this is a very subtle point. There is no clock sense and anti-clock sense between the angle between the two vectors. But in complex numbers, there is clock sense and anti-clock sense. So if you rotate, if you take the angle in clock sense, we will consider it as positive. If you rotate in negative sense, in the clock sense, we take it as a negative. The main difference between, that means, Sadishalaku, Sankina Sankyalaku, Mukshavena Tada, Entente, Sadishalamaja Konamaki, Apa Sabia Dishi, Sabia Dishanade, Ledu, Tendedo, Okate, Makapudu. Gani compressed numbers of Matram, Apa Sabia Dishi, Sabia Dishum. Apasavidisha will never put positive gum and Tanaganu, Savidisha will never put Nathanganu, his Kuntam. And you know that this polar form or trigonometric form, see, we know that it is known that that every complex number. Complex number Z can be written as can be written as Z is equal to R into cos theta plus I sin theta, where R is nothing but mod Z and Theta is the angle, the angle made by, by OP bar with positive x axis. P is nothing but, P represents Z. He represents a judge itself. 
That means origin. And suppose this is Pz. So this is modulus that is equal to R, and this angle is theta. Is a theta itself. So if Z is equal to a plus i b, Z is equal to a plus i b is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. Then a mod r is equal to the mod Z is equal to r, and a is equal to r cos theta, and b is equal to r sin theta. This is. So this theta is called arg z. This theta is called is called arg z. Called argument of z. Z and is denoted by. But here one one thing is there. If z is an argument, if theta is an argument of z, then 2n pi plus theta is also an argument of Z. So here, uh, very important. Uh, quick look. Z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. Also implies. Is equal to implies Z is equal to r into cos 2n pi plus theta plus i sin 2n pi plus theta cos 2n pi plus theta plus i sin 2n pi plus theta that means if theta is an argument value that is if theta is equal to arg z then 2n pi plus theta is also arg z so therefore arg z is a set of values is a set of values so now what we do is just like our elected representatives <laughs> so you know from my constituency the one will be elected so that's why among this set of values of rz we select one value and we call it as principal value of the argument of z so so among among rz values values there is one and only one there is a one and only one only one value theta such that minus pi less than theta less than or equal to plus pi and cos theta is equal to a by r and sin theta is equal to b by r so this theta is called this theta is called principal value value of rz and is denoted by principal value of rz and is denoted by capital rz so here the principal value use uh, capital letter a but uh, for all other values we use small a rz so in fact in fact rz is 2n pi plus capital rz capital rz now here please remember one fact argument of z small argument of z is also an argument but it's not principal 
argument. Principal argument is only one value, which is which also argument. So among the argument values, we are we are picking up one value and we brand it as principal value, right? And the geometrical interpretation is very simple. Okay. Now, how to how to calculate? Create capital object. Now let P Z be the point point in the Argand's plane. Then and suppose, suppose P lies in the first quadrant, so then, then angle XOP, it is less than pi by 2, so implies that uh, angle XOP is the principal value, E arc Z. And similarly, if P lies in the second quadrant, if the quadrant 2 To then also angle XOP taking is is the is the is the arg z the arg z so this is you can have P z. So this angle, because this angle, this is 0 less than theta less than pi, less than a pi itself. Now if P lies on, lies in the third quadrant, third quadrant, then instead of, then instead of coming in the counter clock signs, sense, we go in the clock signs. So this is PZ. If you come in the counter clock signs, this angle exceeds pi. That we exceeds uh, pi. But the uh, principal value of RZ means it is the smallest rotation, smallest uh, rotation of real axis towards the vector, towards the vector. So it exceeds uh, pi, so what you do is, uh, we don't require that, we come in the opposite direction. And opposite direction means negative 1, clock sense, so that, so that theta minus 2 pi is R z. Suppose this is theta, <laughs> this angle is theta. That is, this is theta minus 2 pi. That is principal argument of Z. And same is the case with the, in the, when P is uh, in the fourth quadrant. So, the same is, 
the case when P lies in the fourth quadrant. Once again, I want to stress, it's very important is, uh, point is, the geometric meaning of meaning of org z capital org z the capital org z means means the smallest rotation smallest rotation of of a positive x axis rotation of positive x axis about o to fall on the vector op bar so that where p represents z He represents a judge itself. My dear students, hitherto we have discussed about the principal value of the argument of a complex number. Now we will discuss about uh, the argument of the product of two complex numbers and the quotient of two complex numbers, of which the argument of quotient of two complex numbers geometrically very significant. And see the Plus this one argument of z1 z2 is equal to arc z1 plus arc z2 and uh, argument of z1 by z2 is equal to arg z1 minus arg z2. But these laws, but argument of z1 z2 capital principal value, see, may not be equal, equal to capital arg z1 plus capital arg z2 and uh, capital arg z1 by z2 may not be equal to capital arg z1 minus capital arg z2. This is very important one because here here, these are sets. As a set, this is a set of values. And that is equal to one value from rz1 plus one value from rz2. But here it's not set. This is a principal value means only one value. And that sometimes may be equal to rz1 plus rz2 or may not be equal to rz1 plus rz2. For example, here see, if you take this one, suppose, 1, 1, that means the complex number z is equal to 1 plus i. And this is minus 1, minus 1. This is the complex number z is equal to minus 1, minus i. Now, if you take this one, actually, actually, as the argument z value is 5 pi by 4, but it's not capital R. It's not a capital R z. Capital R z is a, this one, 3 pi by 4, minus 3 pi by 4. Minus 1, minus i. So, 
if you take this principle this argument value is pi by 4 but this argument value is small argument value is 5 pi by 4 but uh, the capital arc value is simply minus 3 pi by 4 it cannot be equal to z plus z1 or z1 plus uh, or z2 right and very important uh, point is uh, see arg of z1 by z2 is the this is very important is the angle of rotation rotation of O Z bar Z2 bar towards O Z1 bar that is uh, that is if O Q bar is equal to Z2 and O P bar is equal to Z1 then arg z1 by z2 is nothing but angle xop angle poq angle poq this is oq op z1 z2 so this angle that is or you can go roundabout way that angle is nothing but argument of z1 by z2. If you go in the clock, counter clock sense, this is argument of z1 by z2, which is consecutive positive. But if you come, if you go this way, this is. So, the other way, you can write that way also. This is also argument of z2, z1 by z2. But this is considered to be this is considered to be negative this is considered to be negative itself so this is arc z1 by z2 that is arc z1 by z2 i will write arc z1 by z2 is positive and this is also arc z1 by z2 which is negative Okay, so argument of the quotient of two complex numbers is nothing but the angle between the denominator vector and the, the numerator vector. If you go in the counter clock sense, the angle considered to be positive. If you go in the uh, uh, clock sense, then it is considered to be negative. So, example this one, this is positive way, so it will be positive. If you go in this way, then also you will you reach OP bar, but that uh, clock sense, so what you get is, uh, we consider to be, that angle is considered to be negative. <laughs> right. So, please don't forget the argument of the quotient of two complex numbers. Argument of quotient of two complex numbers is always the angle of rotation of the denominator vector towards the numerator vector. <laughs>